Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we will be going through the question check array formation through concatenation. You are given an array of distinct integers and an array of integer array where the integers and pieces are distinct. Your goal is to form an array by concatenating the array in pieces in any order. However, you are not allowed to reorder the integers in each array pieces of i. Return true if it is possible to form an array from pieces, otherwise return false. If we see the first example 85 and 85. So we can form this array by using the pieces array and that's why we return true. In the second array also we can do the same and so we return true. In the third example, although the elements in these two arrays are same, but according to the condition that we cannot reorder the integers within the pieces of i, we are not allowed to reorder these and thus we cannot form the input array ARR. Therefore, we return false. In example 4, the pieces array can be rearranged such that we can form the array and following the condition that is given to us. Thus, the answer is true. However, in example 5, the elements differ and thus the answer is false. The constraints given to us is that the length of these arrays will be less than or equal to 100 and also the values would be less than or equal to 100. The numbers in both the arrays are going to be distinct always. So now let's go ahead and see how we can solve this question. Now let's take these two examples to find out the conditions that we would need to solve the problem. For the first and second array, all the numbers in both the list are same. Thus, we can move forward. Now, in the first example, the order in which the internal array, that is this array, 4 and 64, and this 4 and 64 is also in the same order. While in this example, the order of the elements within the internal arrays of pieces is not same, that is, 18 comes before in the original array while in pieces it comes after and we know that we are not allowed to rearrange this. Thus, the answer for the first would be true but for the second would be false. Now with all this in mind, we can come up with this thing where we check the indexes when pieces of i contains more than one element. In that case, we can get an array that cannot be rearranged and that is the case where we'll be returning false. So now there are two approaches, map and array. So let's go ahead and code both the approaches and then I'll tell you what is the pros and cons of both the approaches. Let's first use the map approach. We'll take a map and keep all the first elements from this pieces of i array in it and then in its value, we'll keep the whole array. So let's go ahead and do that. So this will fill our map. Now we'll iterate over our array. Let's take an integer i and we'll iterate over array. Here we check if map contains a key for this element in this array. In that case, we would check the internal elements from that. Otherwise, we can just return false. Now, here what we do is we take this in an array and we'll iterate over this p array. Here, if n is equals to array of i, we do a i++ plus plus so that it checks all the pieces in array. If this becomes false, we can return false. Now, over here, this i++ plus plus will get executed for one more time than we actually want. So, we do i minus minus over here before the loop goes to another i. At the end, return true because we did not find any case where the condition wasn't satisfied so we return true at the end let's run this code take another variable and we get a right result let's submit this 
and it got submitted. The time complexity for this approach is O of n as we are going to iterate over all the elements and the space complexity is also O of n as we are using a map. Now let's go to the another approach that would use an array. So let's take an array or indices which would be of length 101 as we are given that this length is going to be 100. In this index array, we will be storing the index at which the particular element is occurring. So in here, we will be storing the index at which it is occurring. So if you take this array, it would store at index 15, it would store 1 as it is occurring at first position and at index 88 of this index's array, it would store 2 as it is occurring at the second place. Now we are going to iterate over the pieces array. So for each int, for each piece in the pieces array, if the index of the zeroth element is zero, that means we haven't seen that and so we return false. Now otherwise what we do is for each For each element in this piece, we will iterate and check whether the index of the this element and its previous element should not differ by more than 1. So we start from 1 and we check if if this difference is not equal to 1, return false. If everything looks fine, we return that's it. Let's try to run this code and it gives the perfect result. Let's just submit this and it got submitted. So the time complexity for this is also O of n while the space complexity can be said to be O of 1 as we are just using an array of 100 but in that case the previous method would also be the with the space complexity of O of 1 as there also we know that there can be only 100 elements that are going to be stored in the map. One thing to be noticed is just because we are given this condition is the reason we can take this array. But if you want a generalized approach, then the map approach will always work for any given input or any given length of input. So that's it for today guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.